prayed and we getting started on the subject of the steps to marriage. Now, really, we were able to talk, yeah, I mean, yesterday, the other day about other steps to marriage, and we need to remind ourselves the first step to marriage being um, is God calling me to be married? Second step being is am I ready? Am I prepared physically, mentally, spiritually to get married? All right. There was another step when we were studying yesterday was seeking cancer. And we were able to see that in two different steps. Number three was the seeking cancer from our own parents of spiritual leaders. And we are seeking cancer also from spiritual leaders with elderly people from the Bible in regard to how to go about uh, your fourth step. The first step was about of your partner. Now, what's the fifth? When you have done this, then you enter into courtship. You enter into courtship. And that's now what we are looking at. Entering into courtship. Courtship. All right, now let's see. Courtship is the sense. If it is God's very important stage, as you can see what I've been able to show there, but courtship is the sincere desire of two to see if it is God's will for them to get married. Now, let me give an example which I was able to give over here yesterday. Now, as a medical missionary, I know that um, there are various ways of dealing with various diseases. And there are certain things that works best for certain diseases. <laughs> system with a lot of and you'll be good experience because and it's medicine of chest problems science is very good many food for diabetic cases or health yes in a sanitarium and you know that you have just done the whole wrong thing Yes, and then you use God's blood the system, and system with diabetic. That there is anything. 
anything that is not in body in height? There's some message there. I just want to check. Is there anything bad Money, suddenly, I mean, with honey, suddenly, there is nothing bad with the honey. There is nothing bad with the honey. It is compatibility. And so, when you're dealing with marriage, you can have two people in church, two people believing in the same, two people having. you guys can be able to get me anyways. So let's see what I can do. All, all right, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm checking, I'm seeing all things are all right. I don't know whether it's all internet here. Um, Can you be able to hear me right? Okay, that seems to You add. I don't understand what you're saying by you add. Uh, okay, great. You are clear now. Thank you. I'll do this. So, when you're talking about courtship, you're talking about the ability to, for the two Christians to be able to live together. Now, I was giving an analogy, and the analogy I was giving is there are different foods that are used for different diseases. And these different foods are used for different diseases. That's what really mean that if food A is used for disease B, uh, then food X used for disease um, uh, Or D, then it does not for one particular disease, but it's not good for another disease. So the condition that's just exactly is the most important in these things. Yeah. So um, that's what we must check out in, um, in the issue of uh, who is better coupled with who. And so in the courtship, you it's it's a sincere desire too to see if God is willing that they get married. So, uh, a little bit of uh, 
examine carefully to see if your married life would be happily well, would be happy in all harmonious and wretched. Heaven, what? Will it increase my love for God? And will it enlarge my sphere of usefulness in this life? That's the question that we need to be asking ourselves. If these reflections present no drawback, then in the fear of God, move forward. So I'm moving forward because the journey has already begun. We've already gone through step one, step two, step three, step four. Now you're in step five and everything. Make his loan because they are interested in the kind of wedding views of the marriage relationships. Many, but if they could know bound by the marriage vows in chain, um, vows in chains that they cannot and they are not great, they would not be surprised that I trace this line. That is why I would warn the Early marriage, 
relation so important as marriage and so far reaching in its result should not be ended. So I'm not sure if this is my internet or, or what really is happening, but let's pray the Lord will keep it stable. Okay. Okay, let's continue now. Um, let me share my screen again. Right, might have to restart uh, this uh, on here and see what happens. So I might be out for a short while, but I'll be back.
I need to know if uh, the sound is better now before we get started. Maybe you can do one song as I get this. Yeah, we can hear you good. presentation next to the YouTube if uh, the internet fails because there's nothing I can do but we get everything organized. So Father in heaven continue to bless us we continue in Jesus Christ. We were talking about um, the idea for if you lost me I don't know when you lost me exactly we we're talking about the idea that in matters of courtship is a matter of determining if it is God's will that both of you be married together. So you've already seen your parents, you've already, you've already seen the elders, all these things, and um, you are now finding out if both of you could live together. Now, many people want to find out before they did steps number one, number two, number three, number four. So they begin by finding out if they can live together. That's their first step. And that is the time that they are praying, that's the time that it doing all these things, that's the time that they are preparing, that's the time that, I mean, you see, this, that's the one God wants to do. Ideally, 
something you are able to tell her. Tell her to go to get up. This is for to come all the way number one. And really, it's sins and young girls. In fact, the Bible says, and, and a man, uh, rather, a woman shall leave father and the man. A woman will cleave to a man. Now, that phrase cleave is almost united together in a way that is almost inseparable. Let me say it's inseparable. Because God says, and I want to emphasize on this matter, God ideally says that um, he, had, he did not ordain that there should be divorced, but because of the hardness of the art of man, sad, a sad state of things. So what I think is really happening here is uh, God decided that if we united in marriage, then we would live happily for the rest of our life. That's not how things have been seen as mad the marriage institution. And that's why we are finding a lot of, lot of we'll be having a time, we are going to set a time for our testimonies and questions and answers. We're going to strike out one lesson and you'll be able to just hear either the good things that God has done and also for admonition, some of the things that the devil has done in the lives of people to be able to encourage us to seek the Lord more honest in regard to this subject. Because sometimes we don't know the other side. And so we only see the flashy side of marriage. And that's what people tell, the flashy side of marriage. And so there is a possibility of making decisions without rightly contemplating on the matter. All right. Uh, teens must wait. Teens must wait. Eh? If, if you have a child with yeah, that's it. This is what we are told. We are told attachments formed in childhood have often resulted in very wretched union or disgraceful separation. Or disgraceful separation. Okay. Or disgraceful separation. Uh, uh, or disgraceful separation. Each connection or rather, uh, each connection is formed with the consent of parents have, or rather, early connections is formed with the consent of parents have seldom happy. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. <laughs> when formed with consent of parents, we say it's very important that parents are aware. I normally tell young youth in church, if a man approaches you, report that to your parents. Tell your parents what happened. And we were able to find out that that's exactly what um, the Bible has us to do. The young affection should be restrained until the period arrives when sufficient age and experience will make it honorable and safe to unfair. Those who will not be restrained will be in danger of dragging out of an unhappy existence, right? That's important for you to think about. Under 20 is under age. So we're able to look at a few things in regard to is it time. And we realize that there is, there is it time in the respect of is God calling you? But there is also the aspect of physical preparedness. Now, we found that there is an age at which you cannot, however much you feel you're mature in your mind, however big your body could look like, we would still say you are not ready for courtship in marriage. And so, under 20 is underage. The other says, a youth not out of his teens is a poor judge of the fitness of a person as young as himself to be his companion for life. And then we are told, your boyish ideas of love for young girls that don't give anyone a high opinion of you, but letting your mind run in this channel, uh, letting your mind run in this channel, 
to spoil your thoughts for study. So many youth in institutions, in high schools, let's be clear to love relationships. We should preach, we should teach. You hear me, Sister Emily? Young youths, you know, you go to high schools, you find people forming these unions, right? And they say, this is my girlfriend, this is my boyfriend, and all these things. This is a messed society. This is a messed society, right? That such a thing is not even, it should not even be contemplated in the mind of a young youth. But yet, these things are not mentioned in church. They are petted. And that is why we come to a point where by young school students, and they are not able to take care of those children. They are barely 18. They cannot even be able to change the diapers of children. They don't even know how to hold a baby. They are Treated. Some of them are not even able to deliver. They have to go through CS. All these troubles are coming because of wrong decisions in life. And that's what we were able to. It's contagious disease. It's very contagious, I tell you. Blind love is brought in subjection to it. And then you're told they seem to be devoid of good sense. And their course of action is disgusting to all who beyond it. That's just the language that the prophet used, disgusting, disgusting. So when I go to all the years and I find young men, they think that, oh, we are ready to get married. It's disgusting, isn't it? Yeah, to hear the way they are reasoning, isn't it? And, and of course, you say they are devoid of good sense. Good reason, all right? It's devoid of good sense. It's devoid of good reason. And I told you, I told you, and I will tell you again, you find a young man walking around with another lady's poorly dressed, and you're like, you want that to be your wife? You find a young lady walking a young man who's poorly dressed, tight trousers, tight shirts, he cannot even raise his hand to preach the word of God. Hello. So that such a man is a man I don't want my sister to appear with in our compound. Because I do not think that he's even responsible enough. You understand what I'm talking about? There are a lot of things that you come into a home like this, or my home like this, I can tell you whether you're a responsible person by the way you dress. Your dress is sufficient enough. I can know whether you're a youth just by the way you dress. You're a child, all right? And the same kind of trousers, I know only children pick from the market. You know, one day I was asking some guys, look, even, even, even the honorable people, uh, the president of the United States of America, who are finding me a tight jeans, okay? And a tight, a, a tight top and a tight suit. Would you find him in such a thing? Never. Do you find him putting on some bling bling here and walking around? Do you find him doing such a thing? No. So that day, it's, it's, not, it's nothing like that. It means you are immature, you are lazy, you don't have any, any knowledge about what you should be and all these things. And that's the problem. So I see with many, the crisis of the disease is reached in an immature age, marriage. And when the novelty is passed and the reaching power of lovemaking is over, one or both is awake to the true situation. They then find themselves illimited but united for life. They have made the mistake, you understand? They made the mistake. And by the way, by the time you wake out of that mistake, it's not very long. It's not very long, isn't it? Because I talk to you guys. When you are contemplating marriage, you only see the good side of marriage. In fact, more probably, most people are infatuated. Their emotions are tapped into and then they go reward and then they look married just in terms of sex. You understand? Because that's all they want. They are like, okay, every day we will be enjoying the privilege of having. having sex. And when they get into marriage, they're like, oh, this cannot be the thing you're doing every day. All right? And then when they realize this, they realize now, I mean, I got this woman for just this. I got this man for just this. Nothing else ties us together. You understand? I normally ask all you, you, oh, young people that what do you think keeps the old men together? You have old grandfathers who are aging and they are all keeps them together. What makes them love one another? It's not the aspect of the privileges of sex. 
as, as a gift that God has given to humanity. It's nothing like that. That's what many people see. Okay, so you will have it. And when actually that experience is expired, then now you begin throwing your jabs at one another. You understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. Because that's what bound you together. You are simply seeing the, the aspect, the emotional aspect of attractions in us. That's why when you are standing at the podium and taking the vows, then you are talking to that lady. She's a day when that woman gets an accident. What happens when that woman gets an accident? She might not be having those things. I normally tell people, if, what, what is it that you are looking at? Whatever you are looking at, whatever physiological, uh, 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 biological makeup, body makeup that you're looking at, that's okay. But the truth of the matter, let me talk to you guys plainly, because you need to understand. The truth of the matter, there is a possibility that our breasts will one day fall. That's the truth. The truth of the matter is she might not have those hips. More. The truth of the matter is she won't. The truth of the matter is she can get paralyzed. The truth of the matter is she can lose those physical aspects that attracted you. So what do you do? And that's what many young people do not look at. They're just looking at, okay, she's beautiful. I love her. She attracts me. Look at me for what? And that's the mess. You find a man has left a woman because of a condition. Let me tell you of a man who was so obsessed with this thing of sex to the extent he could not control himself and he put it work in a miserable condition. You know what it means in a miserable condition? He would force his wife, even when his wife are a normal, come in through the, the annual opening to the extent that now the wife had to use pampas. You know pampas? Because she has met, he had messed the wife. You know why that? She put this woman in a complete, I mean, suffering forever. Do you know why these things happen? They don't begin in marriage. They don't begin in. If we don't learn to be stable, while we are forming courtship or marriages, we cannot be stable in marriage. If we cannot control ourselves today, we cannot control ourselves tomorrow, all right? If you cannot, listen young people, if you cannot, all right? And my brother, Felica, I know that you, you're getting married. If you cannot be able to ask your wife, are you safe? All right, are you safe, probably? You get what I'm saying? Because if your wife tells you no, and by the way, I understand that it should not even be your wife telling you, I understand that you should be knowing. You should know how to come. All right? Or what do you think? You, well, when you go natural, you're going to be very sharp upstairs. Or else you're going to bring children into the world you can never take care of. Isn't it? She tells you, all right, it's not safe. That's it, isn't it? So it's going to take a lot. We can truly overcome the lusts of the flesh excesses in marriage. Let's look at number six, which is engagement. Now after courtship, which is basically to determine if it's God's will for you to be together, you get into what is called engagement. Now we need to see engagement is just one step to marriage. All right? So let's see engagement. What does it entail? Okay. We have already said that if men contemplated uh, or praying twice in a day, when they contemplate marriage, they should pray four times in a day.
day. Then you've been already so told this slowly and few have correct views of the marriage relations. Look at this. Many seem to think that it is the attainment of perfect bliss, but if they could know one quarter of the attics of men and women that are bound by the marriage vow in chance that they cannot and they, they are not free, they would not be surprised that the trace is like a galling yoke. There are thousands that that's what the courtship was solving, mated and matched. That's what courtship was bringing about. We are told better not to than do it wrongly. Sister Edith, um, Emily has also been impressing some thoughts uh, about even an extent of breaking an engagement if you think it will not honor God, because it might not be easy to do this, or it might not be easy to go through a marriage that's not working. It would be far better not to marry at all than to be unfortunately married, all right? Unfortunately married. It will better you are not married. But seek counsel of God in all of God that you will not be in a fever of excitement and unqualified for the service by your attachment. Okay. Um, so, if the engagement is unwise, the character of the one with whom you intend to unite. And then you come to a time that you understand the character of the one you intend to unite with in marriage. Things become clearer. Evidences become clearer. I remember this story. I was reading it from one of the Atlant books. And this lady comes to a point where they are, they are with the minister. The minister is counseling both of them. And you know, the minister ideally will be counseling. There are times that the minister will be having with her only the, the lady when they are there with the wife. There are times that the minister will be having with only the man to, uh, to, to know a few more things because there's a possibility that are things that the lady might not say in the presence of the man by injuring their relationship. So the minister would want to spend some more time with the lady. And so uh, the minister asks the lady, um, why your friend, he loves to watch movies. What do you think about it? Of course, the minister said that I am not going to unite the people who are uh, obsessed with movies. This has to be corrected. And he says, I think we'll just find a way of how to go about it. And the minister tells her, if your husband uh, will love the television, and she's bought the television set, brought the television at home, what do you do? Now that you don't like the television, you don't like watching movies, you don't like all these things. What exactly will you do? Okay, perhaps I will not watch, but for how long, seeing that this will be something that will be playing almost in the house all the time. It says, but with the time, you might end up compromising and watching it. The time you might end up sitting with him and watching it. That's exactly now. What about the children? And then she asks, he asks the young lady, I don't think having known this, you should marry that man. So you are able to see that there are certain things that can get clearer to you. And when they get clear to you with a clear light, there is responsibility that we have to act in regard to the light that we're receiving. And that's why if you have clear light about your partner, then you should make decisions. They might be radical, but they're worth and you're told. Even if an engagement has been entered into uh, without a full understanding of the character of the one with whom you intend to unite, do not think that the engagement makes it a positive necessity for you to take upon yourself the marriage vow and link your, yourself for life to one whom you cannot love and respect. 
All right? I know of a sister, she, she didn't love the man. And she was sharing with me, I didn't truly, I didn't love, I didn't love the man. I asked her, why did you get married to the man? And uh, she told me that uh, uh, the I got married to the man was um, my parents. My parents forced me. He had a car. And I said, so what? And she told us walking up the aisles, I was walking to the podium, but I didn't love him. I didn't love him. But my mother, my parents, they say, look, you don't disappoint us. We already got the whole beach. And they are coming. They want to celebrate my daughter. You're going to be married with a very rich guy. So don't disappoint. I say, I'm not coming for such a thing. That's your friend. That's my friend. Say, no, 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 no. I'm going to be sick. And then soon the mother said, I am sick with blood pressure. I need to be admitted. And she said, the problem of sickness, the daughter said, you're going to marry the rich man. That's a real story. And then the daughter says, it's because of my mother, I'm gonna marry. She walks, she tells me, I walk up the aisles, but I don't like. But she makes the mistake of taking the vows. And that's the beginning of all problems. Of course, the problem was fast in the parents, but she ought to be strong enough to refuse taking the vows. So that's and parents you need to understand. Parents you need to understand this idea of actually gauging who is fit by the uh, uh, the volume of what is in their pockets. This is not just right. It's, it's, it's getting wild everywhere where parents are actually going to stop people from marrying daughters because they are not rich enough. I don't think this is right. That does not also mean that men should be lazy about uh, trying to attempt that they can take and, and it may to do with uh, dowry, issues to do with uh, um, issues to do with weddings, issues to do with, because really what happens is some parents are putting unnecessary stress upon their children. I call it unnecessary stress upon their children and upon their sons or daughters-in-law to be because of uh, the, they see marriage as an investment. You understand what I'm talking about? They see marriage as an, in, as an investment. This should not be it. This should not be it. And you realize how Laban messed up the life of, uh, of Jacob. Messed up the life of Jacob. We should be godly party. Understand their situation. Even cancel with them and interact with them and see what it is that can be done to make their marriage a success. Understand their situation. All right. And then after interacting with them, I'm sure that the Lord will be able to, uh, to get things. And this idea, I you told you, must pay you know, 400,000 and some people must bring 40. Someone said you have to bring a fresher. You know a fresher? <laughs> the banker will be out right there. Mm. And the man is like. <laughs> hmm? So it's something you need to think about. But generally, if the engagement is unwise, please don't. And there are other things. To look at by the way in, in courtship I, I didn't talk about you are not 
runs to work to the witch doctor for solutions you have to ascertain i'm not saying that no one can be saved from this form that if you are marrying a woman from this form that she is converted and has overcome you know what i'm talking about and how do you get out of those are uh, in bondage tendencies and so on you can only overcome by surrendering your life to Jesus Christ as the only solution and if the sister or the brother surrender their life to Jesus Christ you will see that their character is different from the character they have been you understand so you need to look at this case. I'll tell you something that that is very important. You you can have uh, sisters. Look, you can be going to a home where men are prone to fighting one against another, fighting over land and over these issues. You must be able to find out. You know that's why in society before uh, there there were people who go beforehand. And know more about the lady and their family. Yeah, and it was important because I have seen families where men is like they were trained to beat their wives. That's what they know. They don't know anything. The only thing they know is, and so you can be a Christian, but even if you have a problem with your wife, they tell you what you need to be doing you should just be. Have you not heard these things? Because that's what they have been to make some mistake. I, I, I was in Samburu the other time. I was in Samburu. In Samburu, every woman is a child. Every woman is a what? Doesn't matter how old you are. The moment I am circumcised, my mother is a child. And I go mother one, I don't call her my mother, I call her by her name. I say, Jane, how are you? Because that's a king when they make mistakes. So if a wife makes a mistake and you're in Zamburu land, they are beaten ruthlessly. You are like, my God, what's that happening? They are beaten ruthlessly. A cow gets lost, a goat gets lost, a sheep gets lost, and you are not there, you are beaten. And so we are going to minister, even churches. We need to restore the family relations, and women are really suffering in many of the African countries. You know, sometimes we just talk about things happening in America, isn't it? Causing wars. So, you know how many of these women are suffering in these communities uh, 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 in, in the, uh, where we were. Yeah. <clears throat> the man takes um, a sack of maize. He buys a sack of maize. He takes it to the port. And he says at the port mill that you are to give my wife, when it comes, only one tin. Every time she comes, one tin of maize for one week. No more than that. So there is nothing like maize in many The maize is stored at the portion. You understand? So every man 
takes their way to the pot. As both, you get it from there. The women build houses, manyatas. It's the women who build. The man, he just walks with a, uh, what do you call it, a meal, uh, like that. But they get everything. By night, the children are begging for food. They're asking, they're coming to, to, to the center where we are, saying, please, Children are suffering because children are women, they are the same category. When we sample, like I was told, what happened was is it nine years, and she told the elders of the kid and then he needs to the So we are not solving issues that are happening here. Marriage goes beyond a lot of suffering in which, and the only way we can redeem this is by entering into marriages that will be lessons to the world. Lessons to the world. So that's what is happening. It's crazy. And that's why God says we need missionaries. We need missionaries. So missionaries need to go there. And then you don't need to struggle about these truths that you are struggling about. We need to struggle about the story and the marriage relations. Talking them. However, you want to give someone food, a man, food outside the house? No, no. It's only women and children who eat outside the house. For men, we get food into the world. That sounds to me like only dogs stay outside. Where do you give the dog food? Because Brother Brian was telling me because outside is where dogs are meant to be. You're right? You see? And, and then funny enough, I was like, but they see me eating out. And so what? Am I a less man? But that's what they have been brought up to. Believe marriage has been confused. Marriage has been confused, and we need to really pray about it. So, better break and wise engagements and enter. In. Be very careful how you enter into conditional engagements. But better break the engagement before the marriage and separate afterward as many do. So, that's what many people do. They say now it's gone too far. And I don't think I can break this. But this all right. But I've given. Uh, uh, some may say I have given my promise, and shall I now retract it? I answer. If you have made a promise contrary to the scripture, by all means retract it without delay. And in humility before God, repent of the infatuation that led you to make so rash a plan. Far better take back such a promise in the fear of God than keep it and thereby dishonor your, your maker. It's very important. It's very important to think about that. Far better take back such a promise in the fear of God than keep it and thereby dishonor your maker. That's what God tells us. Let every sort of marriage alliance be characterized by modesty, simplicity, sincerity, and honest purpose to please and honor God. So if that's not honor God, a sincere Christian will not make no plans that God cannot approve. So it might be late, it might be two days, it might be three days, but if it dishonors God, you will have to say, no, I'm not going to agree with it. When I talk about, you know, this is taking me too far, yet the internet has just eaten into our time. Uh, uh, let me just see if we can be able to look into that. Now, the wedding ring. The wedding ring. Uh, this one is am I online? No. See. So this one may be a very tricky one. 
This one must be a very tricky one, especially in countries where this is a law. You know, there are countries where this is a law. For example, in that was the case. And I remember the son had to actually use it until they flew out of the country. So this is a really sensitive thing that needs to be looked at wisely, but look at what the prophet says. The fact that a disregard of the custom occasions remark, uh, occasions remark is no good reason for adopting it. Americans can make their position understood by plain mistake that the custom is not regarded as obligatory in our country. We need not wear the sign, for we are not untrue to our marriage vows. And the wearing of the ring would be no evidence that we are true to our work. But I feel deeply over this leavening process, which seems to be going on among us in the conformity custom and fashions. Not one penny should be spent for a cyclet of gold to testify that we are. And I remember once I was being called, right? I was so wooden. So what after putting it on? Does it add anything to my marriage? Does it lessen anything in my marriage? What's the value? Why is it worth spending on? Is the question. Okay. Something that I can take off when I go to the bathroom and take off after. Oh, in what what is its importance? How will you be sure that I'm having it on all the time? So she had more that this is something that listen, the use of temples and those to particular saints and ornamented on occasions with branches of trees, incense, lamps, and candles, um, votive offerings on recovery from illness, holy water, items, holy days and seasons, use of calendars, processions, blessings on the field, sacerdotal um, investments, uh, the tonsures, the ring in the marriage, turning to the east, images at a later date, past the king and sanctified adoption. Candles. Yeah. Yeah, majorly, most of these things, they have um, evil origin. Now, you need to read um, Eddie Jones' works on weddings and funerals, why the church began controlling weddings and funerals, because weddings were not supposed to uh, one must be to be the control of and to control that to control it. so that's why you are really struggling who will bury your man and your father and your child all right if you if you are doing that there is no problem because who buried uh, who buried Moses? Who buried Jesus? Who buried Christian? I'm talking about isolated case in the scripture. I'm talking about weight of evidence. Are you getting that? It wasn't as complex as we make it today. You understand what I'm talking about? It was as complex as we make it today. But we've chosen to make it complex because what the purpose of the Catholic Church is the two, two key uh, uh, ceremonies, the marriage ceremony. Are you getting it? And if they restricted it to the church, then all the gifts, everything, everyone would have to honor the church. Because why would you have to honor the church? Just imagine if the church had control over marriages and the church says, if you dishonor us, we want to unite you. What are you going to do? You want to say, right, 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 you're not going to, okay, I give up. You understand? So they took control of this ceremony. Another ceremony took control of funerals. Because they knew funerals, these people are distressed, 
then he's got emotionally down and all these things that like, if you say that we are not going to bury your guy, then it would be like, what shall we do? So it's no one believes that he can lower that thing to the grave and say, please get the soil out of that cask. You understand? It's all pagan origins as extent that there was a time that some of them were making decisions not to attend some funerals because, you know, as you're living in a time that actually uh, these things have been done so common that they, they, they have no, they, they, I mean, they have no bearing to, uh, as to what, what would I say, um, their pagan origin. But really that time when they were being introduced, these festivals are being introduced, the ceremonies are being introduced, and the church was taking control of their audit. They saw that the church was having an intention of actually throwing away the word of God. Setting in Kana Galilee, weddings, if you study the spirit of prophecy, taking place in homes, in fact, largely in the spirit of prophecy in homes. And then uh, 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 if, you, if you study well, you'll find uh, in gardens, right? Because the time that we were in the university and we were doing a study on garden weddings, it really got all like, why should you even use that study? Because that should be the thing. Because the first wedding was done in the garden. It, that should be a problem, right? You understand this, what's there? Yeah, so all these things are happening, but because of perversion of the truth, we have come to a point where we are all having a confused um, understanding of these matters. Let's just see it a little bit. Um, we are told the king's daughter is all glorious within, her clothing is all wrought of gold, doesn't it? And then we say, Who can find a virtuous woman? Our price is far better than rubies. The heart of her husband doth set to trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. The apostle presents the inward adorning in contrast to the outward is corrupt, the medical character will never decay. It is an adornment which is not perishable. And let me tell you one thing when you get into the wedding ceremony, you have to check your adornment. How do you adorn? There is a lot of following of the world in regard to how we dress in wedding work, in wedding ceremony. So I'm not saying that you just jump into a wedding ceremony dressed uh, uh, like a woman the fact. Excuse me. <laughs> you have told us to go and be married in the farm while we are dealing and you call a pastor, please pastor, now reading this onion, please let's take vows. Yeah, it's a wedding. And so I do agree we should dress somehow, but there are extremes that have been brought in. I, I, I want you to just explain to me why you are putting on a gown of 50,000 for one day, which you can put on tomorrow when orphans are suffering, when God's work is suffering, lamenting for lack of, and you're putting a gown that is either iron, bored at 50, I told my wife, I will get you a dress, but I will not buy myself because I have very good new clothes. I have very good new clothes. And I'm sure you love them. And I put them on every day. And you found me in them and loved me in them. So I don't think I need to get a brand new one. Of course, I'm not saying I need to get it. But she told me, you know what I was planning? I think it was wrong on the issue. But I was just going to, because she is a, ta a tailor, I was just going to get something done for you. I say, please put on this. But unfortunately, we praise the Lord because I, I, I was excited about that. I said, God, I am not going to spend more than I want to spend. Only show me what is needful to spend on. So I, 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 frankly, I frankly didn't, didn't spend 
on 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 my on on, on what I was uh, I addressed on, on, on. Of course, a friend of mine insisted, and he said, "You know, Zado, how you love to buy your suit." And I told him, "You know, nowadays I don't even know how to put on a suit, my brother, because of my new missionary work." I, I said, "It's okay. Just keep it in your box. I will send the suit." But I am not saying that it's sin to dress well. You need to understand, amen? Mm -hmm. It's not sin. But don't be one person who wants to do what? To go on the excesses, all right? Just do a simple clothing that will honor God so that we can be able to educate the world. The world can spend me. And let me tell you, for me, I mean, it hasn't made me, I mean, my wife still loves me. Are you getting it? So I don't think that if I bought her a gown of 40,000, then she would love me more. It doesn't work out that way, isn't it? So we spend our life, we are wrong. We are wretched, we are rotten. This is what many people do. We spend a lot of time looking at how beautiful that wedding ceremony needs to be. And then we miss up the very essence of character development. And I was like, I, I have talked about this so much, and while I was in he told me to now get it. So everything might not have been right. I'm not even telling you to go that's not it. Him and his church. That's what we need to be copying. But I can think that there are a few things that God was able to show us. And we made a decision we are going to do it the way I feel. And so you need to study this to get the cancers in regard to even these things called rest, right? This thing, what do you call them? Strapless or what? These things without, uh, I don't know, these things was a pick up, whatever, you know, this is just a run, and then they don't. You are there on your wedding day. Everyone is seeing you. What your husband is the first person you want to see. I mean, it's an honor to me. If your husband, I will tell you, it dishonors me. You understand what I'm about? I have need so much money. I get an incompleteness. Oh, 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 you spend so much money, get an incomplete dress, you only put on one. My sisters, like, okay, you are, you are a bit emotional about this thing that's called wedding. And we know the wedding belongs to the lady. But I'm told the wedding is for the lady. It's not yours. <laughs> are you getting it? And that's okay. I don't have a problem with that. We want to do them something good on that great day. But of course, if we are principled, we cannot let reason go. Uh, that's that's what I'm saying. We cannot let reason go. So there must be, there must we must reason our thing. So let reason out if this is proper or this is not. This is not proper. All right. So that's that's really important. Okay. Can we not seek honestly to get the, uh, that which is uh, 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 that which God is just as more valuable than costly dress or pearls or gold? The even having the grace. Of meekness as spirit in harmony with the heavenly angels will not lessen the true dignity character or make less lovely here in this world. The Redeemer has warned us against pride of life, but not against its grace and natural beauty. So it's not a, it's not about God denying us natural beauty, okay? Hey, to visual, right? If your hair you want made, it can be made naturally, beautiful, all right? Praise the Lord. Yeah, we are not fanatics, amen? 
If you want blue face scrubbing, come. We can do it for you naturally at a little cost, isn't it? Yes, if you want videography here, you see, we can do it, amen? Of course, you said, you know, well, excuse me, I want to know more about that. And then she pulled out a quote and said, I read that quote many years ago. And then I'm like, so explain to me the quote you're talking about. I told her, I said, how, how did they get these pictures red and white? <laughs> So I simply told her, I don't want to go and do these photos that are crazy, that are, I don't know, post how, I don't know, post how. I just want something that will remind me that I want wedding and came, and that's all. I don't want more than that. Again, I don't want more than that. I go, I go to where I go for missions. I take photos when he, I do photos and say like, Remember my portable, uh, that time it's one, there was too much money was uh, spent on them. I mean, right now, zero, zero shillings. Because my phone just texts you right where you are, you see? And then number two, they were as idols. And, and then you see people are taking photos with the intention of pride and sorrow, you understand? Uh, to show our, our much, I mean, we graduated here, we won. So that's basically why the stain from display of jewelry and ornament of every kind is in keeping with our faith. Amen. So we don't want jewelry. We don't want. We don't want this extra. Or I mean, uh, uh, extra. Uh, um, I would say um, expensive, extravagant dressing in our weddings. We want our weddings to be plain. We want our weddings to be honorable to God. Okay, and you can be able to see um, what happens in Genesis If you read it all. I won't read it, but uh, time comes to God everybody calls the death of they are things and on a meditation be able to do what be able to interact with them. And you can be able to see. And Jack said is also that we put away the strange gods that are about you and begin and change your work. But God he says God, who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hands and all their earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the ark which was by Shechem. So we have to give up all them before the ratification of marriage engagement to pay a sum of money or its bridegroom equivalent in other property according to his circumstances to the father of his wife. That's not your idea, Nicola. This was regarded as safeguard to the marriage relations. All right? So a dowry is a safeguard to the marriage relations. But that this dowry thing has been misused, okay? This dowry thing has been misused, highly misused, parents, and I, if, I don't know, but if Christ were to allow me to be old enough to give out a daughter, a daughter anyways, I think I would, I, would, I would do something different about this, 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 this dowry thing uh, to, to my son-in-law, but I might not have that opportunity. Anyways. This was regarded as safeguard to marriage relations. It was a safeguard, right? To marriage relations. So to show that the man is capable of doing what? Of taking care of the, the woman, all right? You want to give your daughter to a lazy man, all right? A lazy man. Yeah, you want to give your daughter to someone who can be able to take care of by the way. It's something that I'll tell you. Um, some people think that for you to take care of a woman, you need to be having a white collar job, employed in an office. This was the trouble that I had. And everyone was like, brother, how 
will you survive? And I ask them, all these people married in this village, which office do 50% of them go to? Okay. Was your father employed in an office? Was he married? Did he take care of you? How did he survive? Is survival attached to being in an office? So many of us have the idea that for someone to be able to take care of someone, that person must be in an office, right? But the farm can be your office, amen? amen. The tailoring shop can be your office, amen? But you are someone who can work out using his hands to earn a living. You are not lazy, all right? Whether it's felling trees, whether it's in farming, whether it's in what time, can you work hard enough to supply the wants of your family? Amen. But provision was made to test those who had nothing to pay for a wife. You have nothing to pay for a wife? There is a provision. What was that? They were permitted to labor for the father whose daughter they loved. The length of time being regulated by the value that required, and that's what Jacob did. I mean, and my brother kicked me out of all, so I'm here. I say, but you'll not get a free wife. Can you begin what? And he begins slavery. So if a man says that I don't have money to pay down, if there is an option, praise the Lord. <laughs> you should work. You, know, you must not go and work at your, at your in-laws. It depends on the culture and all these things. But you can work using your hands. Praise that way. Isn't it? You can work using your hands. But the parents of the sister must be understanding. That's what I'm saying. Okay, but it says, when the sinner was faithful in his services and proved the other faithful father, he obtained the daughter of his wife. And generally, the dowry, now listen to me, the dowry the father had received was that what? Given at a what? So where was the dowry to go back? Oh. Was that, was that enough? The dowry, ideally, on the day of marriage, should be brought back. Because they have the man has proved that he can be able to work hard and earn money. Now the dowry should be given back. How many parents do that? Yeah. <laughs> the ancient custom, though sometimes abused as by Laban, was productive of good result. When the sweeter was prepared to render service to his wife, a hasty marriage was prevented. A hasty marriage was prevented. You cannot do it hasty because you have to pay dowry before you go with the woman. You cannot take the woman without paying the woman. So you cannot do a hasty marriage. You have to plan, isn't it? How will I get this done? I get this done. How will I get this done? How will and you must learn saving. You must learn all these things, isn't it? So here's the man just so, but what about if there is no dowry? I meet you there, I'm gone. Now I meet you the one. So here's the man just what? But prevented. And there was opportunity the depth of the fiction, as well as his ability to provide for his family. In our time, many evils result from pursuing an opposite course. It is often uh, <clears throat> it is often the case that persons before it have little opportunity to become acquainted with others' habits and disposition. And so far as saving, life is concerned. They are virtually strangers when they unite their interests at the altar. We find too late that they are not adapted to each other, and lifelong wretchedness is the result of their union. All right, yeah, we, we just there that there are things that need to be restored, isn't it? All right, what about cooking? All right, I, I'm not going to mention about that. People have talked about it. It is a sin to place poorly cooked food on the table. All right, it's a sin. 
because the matter of eating concerns the well-being of them. So the human on the own must know how to we don't need to labor of that because we, we we have studied that. There are uh, there are very many girls who are married and the families who have a particular practical knowledge of the duties involved upon a wife and a mother. They can read and play on the instrument, music, but they cannot. So I had this uh, classmate of mine, and we are from an uh, academic tree, and she's bright, and she's from a national school, and she's doing engineering, and, and um, I cannot cook. And I'm like, we are in fifth year, and you should be getting ready to be married. You cannot cook. I don't think I'm going to marry <laughs> And uh, she says that um, she can come to school, go to school, study, pass exams, go to study, pass exams, get married to a man, and begin cooking. That's not just it. You understand the reasoning? And that's the reasoning of many women today. I cannot just do it. I cannot just do I cannot walk. A man, I cannot wash my car. All right? I cannot mop my house, isn't it? I cannot do laundry. Like here in Africa, laundry, we do it using our water. I cannot do laundry. All right? What about sewing? No, no, because one good thing is all the women I'm seeing here know how to do sewing. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I am glad. So they cannot cut and make, for they never learned how. All right? They consider these things essential. And in their unmarried life, they are as dependent upon someone to do these things as for, uh, uh, for them as are their own little children. It is this inexcusable in many unhappy families. He's strong. He has to walk with it that way. And then you say, you know, Sisi, we are poor. You are poor? How much is a needle? How much is that thread? So is it about poverty? It's about poverty. It's about laziness. You right? So you see the skills that we should. Uh, now, these are things that you need now to be introducing even your young daughter too. Right? So that when you put uh, the sewing machine there, her clothing for school and, 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 and uh, in a wrong position, she never just do it. You see a, a woman who will get a material to dress that person, isn't it? That's simple. And how beautiful will be, even though they are in this for a fellow child. They're great impressive, they're very impressive. All right. So there's something you can think about. Domestic duties we talk, you cannot even uh, think about. I uh, 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 I loved living in college. I, I loved living outside the hostel because I realized that if you are in college, you're living in the hostel, you're gonna be one dummy around. Because you're not going to learn a lot of things. Uh, you are not going to be responsible. You know, our colleges right now are just messed up. It's a, it's a false system of education that, that, that is doubly messed up. You know why I'm talking about that? Because you go all the way to your fifth year just eating in mess. You don't, you don't know how to cook. You don't know how to wash your clothes. You don't know how to do this. You don't know how to buy a soap. You don't know how to do all these things. I mean, it's just crazy. But domestic duties, they're very important. The kitchen and all the parts, the building should be 
kept sweet and amen. So you can be able to see our brother here. You can be able to make that one easy. So it should be sweet. I will be open to get into a big house that a mansion it, but it's not sweet and. I meet at the door on the table and everywhere, and the child has sat at the door and everywhere, and the pampas are dumped. I really pray that God take you to a thatched house and bring a woman from that thatched house to that mansion. Do you know, and I'll tell you, the house that they were grass thatch and mud houses but when you got to the door you felt like removing your shoes they were very well sprinkled the water swept it very clean dressed their chairs but today when people are tired houses these houses all the most dirty okay so if you're praying for a big house you see now the challenge I'm posing. Amen. The house must be sweet, isn't it? Sweet. You know, you can get into a house and you don't want to get out. Even if it's a mad house. You just feel refreshed. You just feel refreshed. Because it's sweet, it's well arranged, things are in order. I'm getting it. You began teaching your children early enough the way the sisters were telling us here is where we put salt, here is where we put this cloth, here is where you hang your jacket, you do your work, you do your work. Everyone is orderly in the house, including we clean plates before we sleep. I'm not saying that must be the rule, but he and uh, with Brother Ryan, he was like our father. But now, this man was old, this is the late man. So we could, uh, uh, ideally, we could go and we could go and eat, all right? And then we would leave the plates. So the wife was not there. The wife was working very fast. We were staying in the man. He was old. He had retired. So the whole 70. Things have been done. Slept. I'm getting it. And he mopped the floor area of the kitchen. Then, when you go in the morning, you find those things clean. And you know he did it, and you are ashamed. <laughs> he would again wake in the morning and prepare breakfast. Remember, he was a principal, a senior principal, Maranda, Umabea High School, all these things. He was doing that. And so he would once in a while, Tell us about his experience. And there was one man, you give him something, he says, thank you for serving. Thank you for serving. Thank you for serving. Thank you for serving. He was very organized. And so he would talk to us and tell us, no, you come to the table, you bring four forks or spoon, and you bring 10 eating spoons and you like, What's going on here? You, you need to know how many guests you have. Um, everything in their house was ordered, including the shape of ugali. You couldn't bring ugali which is shapeless to their table. They would shape it always. That's how orderly they were, that old man. And we learned a lot of things. I think that I, I Appeared the one that he gave us old age, he still fetch water for his wife. And people thought he was crazy. And it was different in living with his son in law in his home. What do you mean? Son in law home? I was that people say crazy. But I asked one question. Is my and I asked a question. He was at home. 
and he walks around, he's doing his father's studies. He does, he's not employed, he gets a little money. He's left my daughter there. If he pays more money there, who suffers? My daughter. It's my daughter. If I save his money, it's my daughter who gets more money. So I am actually hosting my daughter. You understand? He was all different and people didn't understand. We might not say, I believe the same, like we would disagree on some things, but on the wisdom. And that's what I was telling people, that it's not true that everything that a parent tells you is wrong because you don't believe like him. There are a lot of principles that he was teaching us right there in regard to domestic duties, all right? Domestic duties. How? It's a retired principle, he should be resting, but no, he wasn't resting. He had educated his children, he should just be enjoying, but no, he was washing plates, he was cooking. And sometimes even when the wife is there, he Amen? So the domestic duties are very, very important. Um, I don't uh, leave much on that. You, you find more, but I want to stop now. And uh, let me talk about this next time. When we come back as we get into marriage, uh, our, our duties are necessary when we get into marriage. Let's, let's stop there. Let's pray and let's uh, have a question or six there. <laughs> Father in heaven, we're so thankful for the lesson on courtship and engagement. The Lord is about the Lord to end the final steps and you are making things finer and finer for us, detailed and more detailed for us. Continue to bless this one in us and every other speaker that we may speak on because saying to us in Jesus Christ's name. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's a question and I'm sorry for internet problems that we have had today and it is that things will be, things will be better uh, uh, next time Okay, so if there's no question, we'll end. But uh, this is what we're going to do. Um, I, uh, it might really take some time to be able to change uh, uh, Sister Alice's study, but I'm going to try. But what we're going to do is, uh, because one of us has run to another meeting, um, what we're going to do is we are going to have, in the next session, Brother Daniel Mesa, presenting his message. And then we will have a question and answer testimony, all that session. And then uh, uh, and then we finally will be having um, Sister Allison, if we don't find her. We will be able to see how that plans out between the, the, the the second last and the very last lesson, which one works best. So just give me time, but the next session we'll be having Daniel Messer uh, presenting his second and final part. And then we will be able to go to question answers and testimonial sessions and address and counsel from various families I believe, I'm sure uh, that would be helpful. Um, uh, uh, but I'm going to see about the, sec the second last and last lessons we'll be interacting with other people to make a proper decision on it. Someone is asking, is it proper to receive um, help with your uh, with uh, the payment of your diary? I don't think there is a, a bigger problem. I don't think there is a big problem uh, about uh, receiving help. We can receive help for basically anything. But remember, the objective is to test your ability, not only by your parents, but you yourself. You are testing your ability to be able to take care of your wife. And so it's your very first classes where you buy, you are learning, you are learning how you can be able to
to manage your funds, save your funds. If you can be able to save your funds to get this, that means tomorrow when you're married, you can be able to save something to do this. And so it's not only for the benefit of the family, it's also for your own benefit to begin cultivating certain characteristics in your life, um, character traits in your life. So I feel that I would rather, I do not put it as a law, but I feel that I would rather do that dowry of my own self, making my own plans, praying about them, asking God so that I begin trusting in God. Basically, that's what I did myself. But I want to say that's a rule for all of you. But I feel that another thing that you could alternatively do, if you wanted to ask for several help, maybe you ask for help from very close friends because the dower is actually testing your life, your ability to take care of your wife. And it is possible that in some cases, it's easy to interact with your very close friends in regard to helping you with the troubles that you have. So it's something that I feel and I've talked about before that um, um, needs to be looked at carefully. The purpose is to test you and it's not to test how much you can be able to borrow because you can go to the bank and take a loan. But I don't think that's the case. It's not to test how, how much you can be given. Okay, some people, their parents have given them all the things that, but suppose the parent was not there, can they be able to support uh, their, 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 